Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another installment of the State of Fate podcast. We're on our 27th episode now. I'm your host, DTM, and I'm joined by Oblivion and Jill from Theology, as always. How are you two doing this fine evening? I'm terrible, DTM. Terrible. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> terrible. My soul is draining from my body. I'm waiting to summon for Sharena while everyone around me is talking about how fun she is. This is, this is a rough week. It's really tough. I, I yeah. blame you for uh, trying to make it special. You should just summon on day one. I should have. That was that was definitely <laughs> the way I should have gone. But Honestly, here I yeah. Am. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yeah, unlike all the advice of not summoning on day one, you should have summoned day one for the special <laughs> moments. <laughs> I mean, DTM. did you see Rocket Gal's luck on day one? Holy crap, give me some of that. <laughs> yeah, no, that was insane. Like, I couldn't I was, believe it. <laughs> I was just like, jaw dropped. I was like, okay, well, I know we're all the fate luck for, for everybody. Holy crap. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm sure you're just storing up all your luck, and this summoning session Mm -hmm. will be amazing and blessed. I I sure hope so. (laughs) (laughs) You have, like, a decent amount of orb safe, though, so at least there's that. I can go up to 98th percentile, and I'll still be fine. Okay, you should be fine. I'd be very surprised because of that. If if I have Fomortis luck, then, I mean, that's... Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's, like, two out of every or one out of every 50 person will get that condition, which, you know, is decent, but there's always that if, which is always super scary whenever you're summoning. Absolutely. Yep, yep definitely. Um, but yeah, we can definitely start with the bridal banner since obviously there's a lot of excitement <laughs> around that, <laughs> like genuinely. <laughs> and yeah, we could talk about Sharena Finally having an alt after how many years has it been? I, Six. Yeah. Six years. That's kind of crazy. Spring in 2018. It, so and it's it, been a minute. It, it's such a cute alt, too. I, I don't know if oh, you yeah. finished the paralogue, but that about broke my heart. <laughs> uh, that's, oh, man. The, the conversation with Veronica there. Oof. Yeah, it was really, okay. really nice. And I also love the plushies that they had. Yes. Um, after yes. an envelope. That is just so good. Very cute. Like, whoever designed that was, like, on point. Definitely, for it's, sure. I, I'm in that spot now where everyone's talking about how busted the unit is and how power creep is out of control. And I'm like, yeah, but it's my <laughs> unit, so I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. Definitely been there. <laughs> yeah, and we'll get to that eventually. But, um, <laughs> yeah, we... I know it's really glad. I'm really glad that Sharena finally got some love after so so long. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, like Veronica literally had like an alt a year. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let's talk about Sharena because she is honestly pretty unique as a unit with her um, self dance dance whatever it's called mechanic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> have Have you summoned on this Oblivion? Have you gotten her? Yes, I did get her eventually. So my my first summoning session went really really bad. Uh, I got August. That was it. I picked up Emblem as West Park, and then uh, it was it was a oh, I saw. That, that was, was not great. Uh, but then I went back in because my pity was kind of high, and I, I'm I'm oblivion, so I keep going. But uh, it only took about thirty orbs, and I got Sharena. So I was like, that's it was pretty nice. Good. Like it wasn't that bad. All right. Yeah, I guess that isn't too bad. And have, how how has she been, like, just testing her out and stuff? She's completely broken. And, and, and I don't know about SD, she's not really that broken, I feel like. Just because, like, comparing her to Duo Robin, right? Um, mm-hmm. You have to have someone attack to get her extra action, which isn't always possible. Right. But with Duo Robin, you just do, like, an assist, right? But in mm-hmm. Ether Raid's offense, I think she's, like, easily one of the best units in the entire Ether Raid's offense. Like, she's, like, at least Winter Elgar good. Like, she's at least that good. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of, like, um, theory crafting on her about as a, a follow-up Gale Force unit. Obviously, like, with the healing, I was really, really skeptical about her as, like, a Gale Force initiator in Aether Raid's offense, because I just loves to ruin great things when it comes to Gale Force, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, as a follow-up, I think she's really good. You also told me about her as, like, a smite bot, funnily enough. Yes. Which you can, like... 
either assist the initiator into range, and then like canto to a place where when your initiator attacks, you can use that to activate Sharena's dance condition and allow her to dance and start getting extra action. So I think that is actually really, really unique and really cool. And this is something that is really only she can do at the moment. It's like a better, like, you know, like back in the day, we were using like Duo Chrome kind of to do that kind of role, but like it wasn't mm-hmm. Smite, you know what I mean? It was still Rebo, right. which isn't as good. Mm-hmm. Um, and the same thing with like uh, Rearmed Lucina. But the thing is with her, is she can Gale Force herself. So, like, the thing is, like, you smite someone, you smite, I smite her Winter, Winter Edel Garden, um, and then you get your action back right after Winter Edel Garden attacks for the first time. But then after that, you still have three more actions with the Sharena. So it's like, <laughs> like, okay, sure, why not? Who cares if you waste one action on the Smite? It's not that big a deal. So I, it's I think crazy. you can do some interesting things with her as a block breaker in SD as well. Mm. You you break a block, canto back into position, have someone repo someone else, like a, your your Krom repo someone up, and then she's back in action. Wait, well, someone, someone has to she, attack. Yes, she, she doesn't get an action if you just assist her. Like, you need to attack. Engage into combat. It, 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 it at first I thought that too, and then when I, I was trying it, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, you have to attack with somebody. So it's it's kind of, it works, but it's not the best in my opinion, just because like it sometimes you're like trying to find the range where you're safe, so you don't get like <laughs> shredded killed, but at the same time like where you're in range where you're, you can attack from. So it takes kind of like a lot of foresight to know where, where things are going to happen at. Um, you you see, definitely can would... work. But I would I, I know think... this if I had gotten the freaking unit. <laughs> <laughs> this entire podcast will just be us advertising Joel's future summoning session for yep. Shreina upcoming. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, her in SD is interesting. Um, yeah. I've been seeing people talk about it. And I think right now the consensus is that she's sort of like Brave Celif 2.0. Obviously, with the extra actions, it's really helpful, but the fact that you need to, like, attack um, does make it a little bit inflexible. And, like, at the end of the day, she is a melee cav, which um, does have a lot of limitations in, you know, summoner's duels as a mode. And also, um, personally, like, I'm not that high on her combat, but um, I guess she can work. Um, But, yeah, like, I don't think she's... Like, I don't know. She's interesting in Summer's Duels. I don't. I wouldn't say she's meta yet. Who knows? Maybe no. like as the uh, mode develops, like there could be some really cool setups. I know Krem was thinking of some like miracle shenanigans. So I was like, ooh, that mm-hmm. sounds interesting. <laughs> well, she's think- she's a support unit, which is kind of weird for us to get our heads around, right? I mean, that that's it, it's it's really interesting. I think that like if we get a map that's really good for melee calves again, she'll definitely show up. It'd probably be really good there. Mm. But I think it's definitely like very map uh, like selective based on how. Well, this one, this one should be good for calves, shouldn't it? It's pretty open. It's it's pretty it's, easy. yeah. It's pretty it's pretty good. But there, the it's, it's kind of a weird map. Like I don't really like this map all that much, but it, it, you can make it work for calves. It's just that there's other things that can work really well too. So it's like yeah, and like the block um, and yeah, like exactly. the. That, the water like tiles like block. <laughs> has like <laughs> makes it so that there's a big choke point that if you can't get past, especially as like a melee cav, um, it's really hard to work around. Meanwhile, like obviously flyers could just like overcome that and ruin your day, essentially. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Sharena I think will be interesting in SD. Um, and I know. I know, I know I've talked about this uh, on Sharena, but like, I'm not as high of Sharena as a follow-up unit compared to like a lot of other people are as high on Sharena because, I don't know, for me, like, Sharena's extra action is really interesting and really, really cool, but I think, I mean, obviously, like, we can talk about Embla later, who has really, really good support, but I, I personally don't think, strictly as a follow-up, she does anything that is not something that other units can do, essentially. I think she's the best follow-up unit in the game. Literally. I mean, she gets more actions than any other follow-up she, right, she unit. Gets, she gets and four that's... actions, and so if you use her as a smite bot, which is really nice, because a lot of times you have to use like one of your like 
either you bring like like one of the Asker trio and have them as a smite bot, and then you just don't care, mm -hmm. or you use one of your mythics as a smite bot. But sometimes that mythic can actually offer stuff to your team, so like you don't really want to. But she can smite bot and still have three actions, right? And three actions that's literally what your Elgar levels of actions. Um, so it's really really nice. Uh, I like that, and then as a, just a follow up unit, if you don't have to smite with her, she has four actions, and like. The thing too is the flexibility of Kanto. Having Kanto after every one of your four actions is actually absurd. Uh, it lets you be so ridiculously mobile and it also lets you be like, um, we've all played with Regan, right? Like, you know, Regan goes mm -hmm. in, she wears yeah. a mercy in and then she locks somebody in the place. Shreina can do that consistently over and over again. So you can like have her go in, kill something, get out of the way for a little bit, come back in when it's open again, kill something again, get out of the way again. Somebody else dances in, does their stuff, gets out of the way. And she can just continuously like move around. And it also makes it so that you have a lot more margin for error. So like, let's say you're trying to lock somebody else in, but it doesn't work out. Well, all of a sudden Shireen is like, okay, cool. I still have Kanto, so I can just fix that for you. So I, I think she's, when I was playing with her in Gale Force, I was like, okay, this is like, they've made Gale Force so easy now. <laughs> like, I don't think it's <laughs> even a difficult strategy. I, mean, I will say Gale Force has definitely been like the easiest it's oh, been yeah. in a while. Yeah. Um, like for, for me, like when it comes to like team comps with Sharina as a follow-up unit, like obviously you have your three mythics and that is like mm -hmm. set in stone. If right. you do not have a bonus unit, you have to run one of the Asker trio, exactly. which generally is yep. your smite bot. So like Sharina's role as a smite bot, that super unique role isn't as impactful in seasons where you don't have the mythic unit. And then, so like basically these days you basically have two, right? You have your initiator and your follow-up unit and mm -hmm. I guess with Winter Edelgard, it works really, really well. But if you're using something like AoE Golveg or AoE Edelgard, um, obviously you definitely need um, someone that can actually support with cooldowns and stuff, which is something that Sharena doesn't oh, do that well. And personally for me, I really value cooldown support um, since it definitely does make a lot of initiations and a lot of Gale Force in general really, really good, especially when you get mm -hmm. uh, the Gale Force special to just be one tap. Um, but yeah, that's basically like, Shireen is obviously really strong as a follow-up unit. It's just personally not my favorite, honestly. <laughs> Oblivion, think, you, you realize yeah. what has happened here, right? Right. Yeah, no, I they, they, have, they have now broken open the number of actions you can get, <laughs> and yeah. DTM is jealous that he won't be able to have the highest actions of anyone else to be Gale Force. <laughs> and that's really what's going on. <laughs> I, I think it more has to do with with uh, DJ being so like uh, Golveg, like he, like you're very big on Golveg. <laughs> uh, I just use Winter Elgard. I haven't used Golveg since Winter Elgard came out. Literally, like there's just I just haven't found a use for. Her. Like I just like whatever I need to do, Winter Elgard does it. Um, and now like I I was guild forcing with Shreina and Winter Elgard, and then the rest of my mythics. And Winter Elgard and Shreina did all the work. Literally, my mythics could just do whatever they wanted. <laughs> like they were getting pots, they were breaking blocks, they were chilling. They were having some coffee in the back while those two just did all the work. And I was like, this is way too easy. Like I had like four <laughs> actions left and the game, was, like the match was already set. So um, I think the one thing I would say is like, if you don't have a dancer mythic, then I could definitely see Serena being the like your one support unit not being as valuable because you need a dancer. Like you just always mm -hmm. want a dancer on a Gale Force team, at least one. But if you have a Gale Force or if you have a mythic dancer, then I feel like she's like really, really up there. Uh, I, I think the the other option is actually Gold, or not Goldbeck, um, Embla herself. Embla, right. I feel, is like so ridiculously good, kind of transitioning, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> uh, because she acts as Valoria, but better, essentially. Like, she doesn't give everything Valoria has, but she gives the important things, and she's a better guilt forcer, and she turns off saves, right? Like, <laughs> the support mm -hmm. she offers just outvalues Val Valoria, in my opinion. And so, like, for me, I've been going back and forth between those two. I have a team with one with Embla and one with Shreina. I'm trying them out and they're just both amazing like depending on what, what you run into what the map either of those teams can just pretty much handle anything like you just have to be a little bit creative sometimes but a lot of times even if you make mistakes because you have so many actions it's not even a big deal and that's that's the big thing it is so much more forgiving now that, that's exactly. the big thing with gale force um the other thing with uh with embla is that you can you can speed match and yep. actually get multiple units with cooldowns as well Embla's really cool. I really like her. I, she, also, she's an excellent unit. Like the whole SD thing of her cleansing herself from Leon is cool too. I don't know. It's probably not that realistic. I haven't got to test it in SD. 
So I don't know how good that actually is, but I think it's just a cool interaction. I think I've seen like a couple teams or like theory crafts of teams with that in mm-hmm. SD. And yeah, that is something that is really cool. The self cleansing, just like being able to soak that due to her natural high speed. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously the saves denial is really helpful. Although in SD these days, you don't really see that that often unless it's like Mer. Um, which, you know, still can be useful if you match against a Mer team. Um, Mer so, I hate Mer, she's so scary. <laughs> she's yeah, so annoying. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, at pass seal or pass four with uh, damage reduction having anytime IS, please. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so like, I think the fact that she can be used in SD, despite her not being like a ranged unit, which I think a lot of folks were hoping to be used yeah, in SD. I because. Pers- I was definitely hoping for range unit. <laughs> yeah, because obviously, like range units are a lot more um, uh, impactful than uh, melee units. Um, right. But yeah, I think for ether aids, it's kind of funny because like people are starting to run Freyer off season in oh my, dark yep. season these days due to Embla. Yep. <laughs> you kind of have to, and because of the uh, Freyer scandal, we won't really talk about too much. Uh, Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, it's very, very sad. I'll say that first. Yeah. But second of all, we're not getting any Freyr alts, which I'm very happy about. So, <laughs> like, uh, not having to deal with that is pretty nice. And I, I don't see that changing. And I know there's definitely, like, the top tier uh, defense players who will make defenses that have very big loss ratios. Like, if not loss ratios, um, loss scores, right? Like, they'll have, like, a minus 60 or minus 80. But they're going for the win, right? They don't care about how much score they're losing. They're going for the win. And so mm. they'll run Freyr. But um, a lot of teams will, right? Right. Yeah, Embla. I know you mentioned that, like, there are certain things that Valoria does better, which I do agree. But I think in most situations, you would probably run Embla because... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just exactly. a, a lot more impactful because one of the big ways people have been getting around Gale Force is using saves. And when that's not an option, yep. well, you can probably just, like, play around it really easily. A lot of people haven't prepared for it yet. And even like if you do want to prepare for it, it's not easy to prepare for, right? Like there's not like a mm. clear thing you do and you're like, now I'm emblem proof, right? Like it's 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 difficult. Well, it's the the glass cannons are becoming less and less valuable. Uh, which which is a weird place to be. Like I even on defense, like the, the top defense makers, they, they talk a lot about who what the stat line is for the, the units you put up front. You mm. usually take your squishy units and you put them on the back line. Right. Yep. Yeah, definitely. It'll be interesting to see how much impact Embla and I guess to a lesser extent Shreina has on defense because um I wonder how often you'll see Gale Force increase as a result of this due to Embla, due to Sharena. Because I know we've talked about this before, but like obviously Gale Force isn't exactly the most popular strategy. Um, So I wonder if Embla will increase that popularity enough so that it is actually worth trying to counter like Gale Force teams versus just doubling down on, you know, tearing apart saves and Omni tanks and and turn teams for your against your defense. I'll be completely honest. Like I don't think, like it's hard because like what does meta really mean? Meta is supposed to be the top one percent, right? Like it's supposed to be the best strategies in the game. But realistically, like that one percent meta doesn't really reflect the entire player base very well, right? Mm. Um, and so I think a majority of the time you are better off just like having your defense being very very focused on like anti-ike essentially because that is what i see most commonly just people throwing ike out but the problem is is like when you go for those rank ones eventually at the end of the week you will start running into people who are using you know m blood gale force strategies like high action strategies you know i mean aoe's Mm -hmm. um so it's kind of like a difficult place to be where you you kind of need to prepare for both and it's like how do you do that right because they've given us so many tools in this game now uh, to really just make defense players like life's hell, essentially. I, yeah, I also don't think we'll see an increase in Gale Force. I mean, <laughs> we, we've if Winter Edelgard didn't increase Gale Force, <laughs> and I, I guess she did a True. little bit, but for the most yeah. part, like we didn't see a huge spike in it. I, I don't think this banner will as well, either. That's True. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. 
it was also, funny though when uh when that banner came out infantry post messaged me and he's like tell everyone she's bad please i was like <laughs> <laughs> he, he did that to me too <laughs> tell everyone not to summon on this banner <laughs> It's like, you want me to tell folks not to summon on a Sharena banner? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just get Sharena. Don't, 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 like, don't get a... Don't get I'm, so, I'm yeah, sorry, who needs Emma, APS? right? Who needs, <laughs> who needs her? Did, did, you, did you guys see the, the PM1 45-minute long build video that he put out on the banner? I haven't watched Wait. it, but I saw it on Twitter. Yeah, I saw that. I don't think I've watched it yet, unfortunately. Yeah, he... he it, oh, man. He, he was excited. But his uh, his anti Ike Sharena build is the one that's got me really curious, and he's got Flow Guard Four on her in order to counter Ike. So, huh. Huh. Uh, we'll see how that goes. That's interesting. I, yeah. I think the thing about this banner, like, uh, is that it's just a really fun banner, right? Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. think like like it's not just the fact that Sharan is here or just like Embla or whatever. It's like the combination of everything. Like, it's really fun units with really cool effects. Um, and like it's it's very much a gale force banner but it's also flexible enough where it could be other things as well which is pretty cool right because trinity could be a really powerful hit and run unit too mm -hmm. um if you, if you want to pull off that strategy and then embla can work really well with hit and run also uh because she can turn mm -hmm. off the saves and then you can use like aoe like nuker like uh, a green or yuri or something like that well it's it's creative and i right. yes. i mean and i'm i i hate to badmouth your favorite unit but i ike isn't exactly a creative unit it's oh, no. He's not. make unit stronger Unit survives everything. Now you have to work harder to get them to get them dead. You know that. Oh that's... Yeah. yeah. I, I to be clear, I never claimed he was a creative unit. Uh, when when I was asking for Eichel, I very much asked for not an army tank, but you know that's what they give yeah, us every time. We, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted like a ranged nuke Ike or something, something new, but uh, they they refused to do that for me. So yep. Ike's just stuck with uh, Ragnall or Irvin, I guess, yeah. as the options. Um, or, but, or no preference weapon for some reason. <laughs> yeah. I mean, other than the 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 alts that shall not be named, you have a pretty pretty good track record with like. <laughs> uh, kind of, yeah. Kinda. It's not bad. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I can talk about this for an hour, so let's let's not get into it. But uh, yeah, yeah. So I'll start complaining. Um, but but anyway, yeah, I, I, the the creativity on this banner really shown mm -hmm. through, and it's it's yes. good to see Is doing something without saying, "Ooga booga, more stat, go better." Yeah. Right. Like again, like I feel like effects that unlock more like gameplay, um, like creativity or gameplay agency is just really, really, just really, really fun. Honestly, right? Like, cause you can do different things with like these units, and I do agree. Like all these kit designs are super, super good, and I really, really love them as well. Um, I would have loved Even lapis. lapis. Up. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. You, I was about to yeah, mention, I would have loved Lapis a lot more if her smoke thing <laughs> was within two spaces and not just yes. the unit she attacked. You'd be broken, though, if that was the case. Like That, that would be insane. Would it, though? I, I don't think so. I think it would be <laughs> like, really, have, really fun. <laughs> imagine an SD. You go in and you're like, okay, I sacrifice Lapis, Lapis, she kills somebody. And then afterwards, every time you kill a unit after, your unit refreshes. That would be insane action economy. Like you would just win every trade war ever. Like, it, that would that would be nuts. Sort of, I think, but also like Gale Force isn't exactly like the most powered thing compared to Ether Rates, just due to how like the turns work. They like I know they needed to do like a version of smoke. Kinda like they did with Leon where only one unit would get hit by it. Yes. it, it in other words, yes. they would well, they would reward if Lapis actually killed a unit. Yeah, I agree. Right. That's, I that's agree. the big problem with her is it doesn't reward you if <laughs> Lapis succeeds. It only rewards you if Lapis <laughs> she fails. fails. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because the, the thing with, like, Gale Force, right, in SD is, like, uh, it's not very good because you lose your special. Yeah. Um, so even though you do, like, have that unit out there ready to attack again, it's not that great. The, the we unit that actually did it the best, who wasn't that good still, to be fair, uh, was Golvek, right? When yeah, Golvek, Golvek, when people were playing her in SD, uh, because the thing is, like, yeah. she just adds pressure. You have to kill Golvek now. You don't have a choice. Like, she's in your face, so if you don't kill her, she's going to kill something else, right? So I think that's kind of what... Uh, could have happened in that situation but yeah at the same time who, who's to say right like we'd actually right. have to I, I i don't think it would be that like broken in something like summer's duels i think it would be really fun though like because like when the trailer first got released that's i thought it was like within two spaces because mm. like you know why <laughs> what else would it be weird. yeah yeah um because i do think that like 
Gale Force debuff or whatever it's called. We'll probably figure out a better term for it later. Um, is really, really cool design. Like, like inflicting your enemies with an effect where they grant the opponent's Gale Force. I think that's really interesting. And there's a lot you can do with that. Um, especially with her like built-in warping as well. I think that would have been like really cool, especially for Gale Force. Um, but oh well, I guess we like it's like what could be right what could have been mm-hmm. uh, i yeah. i really i think it would have been fine if it would have been one unit if it every yeah. unit within two spaces it would have been craziness Crazy. but, I think it would uh, have been, like, just just <laughs> one unit though i mean it's almost like embedding a time bomb within your team you know you gotta make sure that, that team that member oh, doesn't gosh. get hit uh, have to like until end turn, the end that of the turn unit immediately yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I actually had a question on one of my videos talking about like the next meta, like the next toxic meta is what they put. And I was telling them, I was like, you know what I think it is? I think it's like an action meta. Like we're, we're going into an action meta. We had Sather and Leon turning off actions and now we're getting Sharena and Lapis giving out actions um, in a way, right? And like, I'm like, oh man, this is, this is a scary place to be, to be honest. So we'll see I, how that goes. I want to know how toxic Sharena is going to be in Arena. Is that, oh, that gets to some interesting things. Huh. It will be back to like it was before, where like you can't lose any units, because if you lose a unit, you'll lose like three. So yeah. you can- <laughs> I, I mean, I get, that's sort of how Arena is without like the bonus legendary, so... Right. I don't think it would be that bad, honestly, in Arena. I, I think DTM just called us whales. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to say that out loud, Joel. Shh. I don't like fishing, so I, I don't mind. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I'd be cold. Right. Honestly, I legit forgot that you could lose a unit if you have the uh-huh. bonus legendary. Like, when That's I nice. did my arenas <laughs> with bonus uh, Krom, I, like, completely uh, forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot for, like, a month. Stress. It took me a while to, like, actually start remembering that that was the case. I, I rarely ever use that. I, I actually need it more in Arena Assault than I do in actual Arena. Wait, does it work in Arena Assault? <laughs> no, it does not. Oh, okay. I was going to say, <laughs> what? I've never done that. I, I wish it did. Yeah, that would have been interesting for sure. Um, but yeah, like overall, like this Bridal Banner, I think IS definitely knocked it out of the park. Like, mm. this was sh- such a cool banner. And. Obviously, we had the demos of Nell and Alchrist, which, you know, they're demos. They have some interesting weapons, I guess, but, like, they're there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know Satoshi was really happy about one of them, but rip the orbs, I guess. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Speaking of rip the orbs, we also had the Fallen banner that was before this bridal banner. And uh, any thoughts on this Fallen banner, Oblivion? best banner ever oh my god I, <laughs> I mean honestly it's not the best banner ever but it's very up there like if Lumera was on that banner I would have like that would probably be my favorite banner of the year but Lumera being there makes it like more neutral because I'm like okay I just had to ruin it a little bit by adding Lumera but sure, <laughs> we got Nurgle that's what matters yeah Nurgle is super super interesting and oh he's so cool he's so cool mm-hmm. like the thematics in this skill is literally perfect. Like, I cannot believe how much they nailed the thematic of how Nurgle fights in that game in Fae. Like, I, I can't even... I, I was so happy. Like, ask Tatra. Me and Tatra were just like, oh my god, they did it. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, the essence drain effect and, mm-hmm. like, all the thematics about that. They really implemented that really, really well. And the bonus stealing, I feel, is also really, really interesting. Um, I know, like, as of recording, Summer's Duels is just underway, so, Mm -hmm. like, obviously it's still early days when it comes to Nurgle and SD, but I've I've been seeing some teams with him, and he's been pretty, pretty cool in those. Have you seen Raid Boss Nurgle? (laughs) 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 Is that with, like, C Duel, or C Bonus Doubler, Lagoose Friend? Um, Yeah. Okay, I see, I see. That's interesting now, too. He's, he's pretty stout. Like he, he can he can hold yes. his own. He, he's not gonna be the, the most beefy unit on the on the planet, but he he's, it's interesting. 
he's just so cool. Like, and the thing is too, I was kind of afraid like he was going to either get like GHB or something like that. And mm-hmm. then I was, after I saw his actual kit, I was kind of afraid that like he himself would have to do everything. But the fact that he gives essence strength to your entire yes. team and it's a global range for the the drain yeah it's like mm-hmm. so cool like it's so insanely good it's like okay like it's like it's like nurgle too like nurgle would do that in the game he would have one of his pawns go out and like kill something and die and he'd be like oh that's fine we got we got all the stuff we needed like it's it's just perfect i love it we we go back to creative play though and i, I think this is another one of those things that isn't just absolutely busted because of the way they implemented it but mm-hmm. create some really neat opportunities so i oh yeah. yeah yeah like they did a good job yeah one thing holding nurgle back is like needing lf with or Lagu's friend which obviously all the whales will get for nurgle obviously but like out in the wild um it i found it to be a lot rare and without Lagu's friend, like Nurgle isn't as like tanky or anything like that. Um, and also, because of like Thor, because of Loki, which we'll talk about later, like a lot of teams were already trying to deal with having limited yes. or no bonus, at least when it comes to Summoner's Duel. So, like, like even though Nurgle's effect is really cool, it's not like that meta, like changing or something, um, or like meta breaking or anything in my personal opinion it is really really neat though because again if you ever run into like a full pathfinder team with dagger you could just steal that and just go to town and it's really really cool <laughs> or a green giving out the extra movement that's like my mm. that was my favorite thing the team has extra movement and then you steal their movement and then also they're crippled and your team's like super mobile it feels so good like yeah. it's like oh my god <laughs> it's so so cool uh but yeah like you mentioned i think duo thor is still the great equalizer uh, mm-hmm. Loki to an extent, but Loki I don't find as I don't know how to explain it. Loki takes more setup, I guess, and like you right. can kind of plan it out, and it requires a map where you can do that. Mm. With Thor, it's just like okay, do a button, stop this nonsense. Like she's she's like <laughs> the um, the babysitter. Like she's like no, everybody's on timeout, stop, no one's having fun. Um, and she just shuts <laughs> everybody down. <laughs> <laughs> she's the hall monitor. She's the hall monitor in her bikini. <laughs> yeah, jeez. <laughs> But yeah, so I, I still think like Duothor is so such a good unit. Like that unit is just still ridiculous somehow. But How she, she definitely she, does keep Nurgle like... in a check to an extent for sure. Yeah. The thing is like an SDS, like you can just ban Duothor, but typically right. nowadays you're not really doing that most of the time. <laughs> it's kind of like a, a bad ban just to, just to ban just because of Thor, right? Right. Typically yeah, you, it's like the team you're looking at. You've got bigger fish to fry. Yeah, typically, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How? old is Thor? Is it like two years now? Three two years? years. Yeah. Two years. two years. Yeah, soon. Yep. Yeah, it's, I think in July. Honestly, it's incredible how well she's aged, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like, always being a mainstay just because of a button. Like, nothing else about her. Just her dual button led her to but like... But it's, it's dual button plus AoEs plus being a flyer. And yeah, it, I guess that's it, true. The combination yeah. of those really, really uh, do well for her. Yes, mm-hmm. definitely. He's yeah. like think, very, very versatile. Think about if Medius had that dual button. We we'd <laughs> still we'd still use him, but we would grumble a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> right. Honestly true, yeah. Being flying range is just a superpower when it comes to summer's duels. <laughs> Have you seen Nurgle in Ether Eight's defense? Yeah. Or maybe even none. offense? None. I've I've seen people seen try it. None. It didn't it didn't go well though. Yeah. That's interesting. Cause you would think like with all the I guess like Omni Tank teams don't really need bonuses these days, huh? Uh, well, I don't. Ike Ike doesn't need bonuses. Yes, exactly. <laughs> to be clear, yeah. <laughs> that to was the clear, funny yes. thing about uh, about Loki actually. Like so many people talk about, like, oh, it's the death of the Omni Tank, whatever. Again, right? It mm-hmm. definitely hits some of the Omni Tanks pretty hard, but like Ike like only needs two bonuses at the most. Like, like he doesn't really need much. Uh, maybe you need the AOE like bonus, but then you could also just use terrain. So that's yeah. also another option. So, like, I kind of, like, came out the winner in that because, like, everybody else got nerfed a little bit and he didn't. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm fine. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, Loki's, Mythic Loki is a really interesting unit, though. I think she's pretty, she's not, like, meta powerful, but she's, like, one step below that. That's probably where I put her at. Right. Um, but she, she's pretty cool, especially because Dark was kind of, like, Dark Mythics are not the, the best. Let's be fair, right? Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're still honestly even with Loki, I think they're still pretty terrible. Honestly. Um, oh yeah, I mean they're, they're not amazing though, for yeah. sure. 
it, it's really funny though because like when Loki was released, we had the SDR season, um, and it, everyone thought it would be like all Cav teams. But then Heavy Burden and then Loki showed up, and then like people were like, "No, it's all Gravity Heavy Burden comps now. Cav teams be gone." And Loki just like completely rose in usage thanks to the like those types of teams. Um, obviously, this can't be done in the same map because it was pretty specific to that map setup. Being able to do right. that, um, but it's just interesting how that played out. Like it went from like full calves to like trying to counter that to like, oh, this is the new meta now with Loki and Heavy Burden. The thing too is like she also countered a lot of uh, of the Omni tank, like the raid boss mm-hmm. comps too. So like right. That season, I remember, because I was like trying to like get it done quickly, and I tried out the Cavs, and I tried out the Raid Boss, and the second I tried out the Loki team, I was like, "Yep, this is it. Like, this is just <laughs> it. Just it, you had options to answer everything. It was just so nice. Like, you're like, okay, they're doing this, I can do this, right? Like, there was always an option. Yeah, definitely. Honestly, like, even though it was erosion season, which you would think it was all Cavs, like oh it, it just ended God. up yeah. being <laughs> all heavy burden, which is super funny, going from like. 5% usage last SDS season to like literally over half of mm-hmm. teams in rank one using heavy burden. Like literal, literally zero to hero. I would go into a match and I saw heavy burn. I was like, okay, this person knows how to play. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just pay attention. Because like, <laughs> you know. a lot of people were just not using it. They had no idea about it. And then the people who actually like knew how to mm-hmm. play SD and like were practicing, they were all using heavy burn because they knew how strong it could be. Yeah, like you could just shut down the entire enemy team. There, I, I played a map against a guy, and he was like really low ranked. And I felt really bad about this, but he never got a play. All of his actions were just moving <laughs> one space the entire game. He just. never got to hit me or anything. He just died, and I felt so bad. I felt like a bully. Like, oh my gosh, is this the return? He probably of never guidance played SD meta? again. <laughs> <laughs> is this I the mean, I guess it. Uh, Mur was like pretty good that season, though. I saw people was using Mur, but like you had to like. Um, there are some other units you had to bring with her, like to like really like be able to still keep the, the threat range going and stuff. Right. And personally, I found that I tried Mur and I found it better just to use flyers. Like it was just mm. you just trade better and like outposition them better, and you didn't really yeah. need Mur. And also like using Mur just leave you open for erosion for like if you ever run into that. Um, mm-hmm. Although I guess yep. people just forgot about erosion apparently without with all the heavy burden <laughs> comps running around. Um, Honestly, I that did SCR- see that a couple times. That was funny. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, that SCR- a DTM stream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Unironically, that SCR season was like one of the funnest like times I've ever done a season in SD. And it was also really varied when it comes to like pastas as well. Um, <laughs> like literally six different pastas running around in like the various communities, which is always interesting. Well, yeah, SD I'm, feels like it's starting to level out after the Leon apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, like, again, our uh, Lucina is the ultimate Leon Oh, counter. my gosh. Stop. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. Again, you slop. You still have an action. Uh-huh. She just soaks the smoke. <laughs> doesn't go on to the next turn, and you can get the revenge kill. Easy peasy. Right, I'm squeezy. Right, totally. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> I won't go on about Lucina. Um, I guess shifting it back to like Loki, because obviously she was a pretty good user in that heavy burn thing. Outside mm-hmm. of that, um, how often have you seen her in Dark Season? Just like running into she had, like, her. A, she had like a bonus month, so I saw her quite a bit. But I, I'm kind of more interested to see how much she shows up after her bonus month, right? Right. I'm, uh, I'm at I about 50-50. Yeah. So I, seeing her not, that's... Um, the problem is a lot of, a lot of cav, lines are, are, cav lines are back. <laughs> as, right. as if they left for that long. <laughs> uh, but and, and she's not very good for cav lines. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. M- most of the time, the, the clump O units in the corner is where you want to use her. Right. Like, if we ever go back to, like, Catria Balls, for whatever reason, like, Loki would definitely be a lot more um, impactful there than in oh, Cav yeah. Lines. Because, yeah, Cav Lines, you just use Cavs unless you have, like, Chloe or something. It, it's it's tough because you th- there's a case to be made that Kavasir is actually the best dark mythic. 
Oh but the problem gosh. is the investment is so insane that almost mm-hmm. no yes. one has that devoted basket. To <laughs> like it's you, you have to gut her entire kit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I didn't do that. <laughs> I was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> well, I, I don't have devoted baskets, so that that wasn't even an option for me. I don't know if I have it. I don't think so. It's only on Selena, right? Selena has Selena, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't think I pulled for her. Yeah. It's kind of crazy how good that weapon is. Like the fact that yeah. you're getting rid of Cavacer's <laughs> perf for oh that to be optimal. Um, also, Tashi, that's the only reason why Summer Violet defeated Valentine's Lucina. Just FYI, just wanted to mention that right there. <laughs> oh, that's how Summer Violet was killing things. Because he kept telling me Summer Violet was killing things, and I did not believe him. I was like, okay, sure, Satoshi, <laughs> I'll give it to you, whatever. But I was not believing him at all. I was just like, nah, there's no way. So oh, that, makes, this, that makes a lot more sense, though. In this last Hall of Forms, Summer Lorenz carried me <laughs> because I got Devoted Basket real early on. I put nothing on him, and he still just demolished oh everything. I was like, what is what is this? I don't I don't want this unit. Go away. Burn <laughs> damage, baby. Burn damage is yeah. so good. Yep. I mean, with all the unpierceable DR these days, right? Like, burn damage... Like, the only thing Ike doesn't protect against, besides AoEs, is burn damage. And so, you sort of have to rely on that to knock down Ike. Unless you run AoEs, of course. Unless you face a support by Goto or something. It's fine. It's fine. I ran into Camilla, she did like 40 burn damage to Ike. And then he took zero damage and he just killed her. And, killed all <laughs> and I was like, yes, Ike. Yes, Ike. <laughs> I, I had that within a green where a green proxed the AOE, brought him down to one, and then did zero times <laughs> yep. two. And I was like, come yep. on. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. I, I had I had that instance with Valentine's Lucina against I green, actually, as well, where she mm. would, again, reduce it down to one and then do zero damage to Hardy Fighter. I was just kind of funny every time because I know that matchup now in my mind, so I'm no longer afraid of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, uh, going back to the other units of the Fallen Banner, since we did move to Loki. Um, mm-hmm. Speaking of Ike and supporting Ike, we also had Vale as uh, one of the units in the batch with the Super Scowl, which obviously for a unit like Ike is really, really good because of the Force Desperation. Um, and I will just say this right now, like I think they really nailed the art for Fallen Veil. Mm-hmm. It was oh, absolutely. Really, really good. Yeah, looks really good. I was so scared that they would just like have her in like the dark hood, like Organization 13 <laughs> style. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I'm so glad they went with the like the the more ornate outfit design for sure. Or, or they did the Lumera where she has the same. She doesn't have a change of clothes, so she's dressed <laughs> oh the same in every all. Oh my gosh. Yes, yeah. I, I'm so annoyed with that. Her art is great. I know everybody wants to say that. Anytime I say anything bad about Lumera, they're like, her art's so good, though. And I'm like, yeah, uh-huh, sure. But you know what? <laughs> she has the same sprite in every single one. They just changed the color of her, like, yeah. her, uh, her, uh, what you call it? Her flames. Yeah. Again, though, the art is really good. Like, the facial expressions and everything is really yes, good. It is. <laughs> I guess I'll be that person for this podcast. <laughs> And I, I don't think we're saying the art is bad. That, that's that's not the case. The mm-hmm. no. the it's art just... direction from IS is weird that they want her in the same same attire well, every I mean, time. Let's be let's be real. We all know what it is. They're lazy, and they're like, hey, <laughs> we can take the same sprite, make another alt, make more money off of it, and do almost no another work. Like it's like okay, cool. Like they literally right. just go hot, commission someone to draw the art for them. It looks amazing, and the artist did all the work for them. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think Lumera is definitely like the, uh, the more lackluster unit on this batch, especially like I agree. Yeah. both art and also like just the kit in general. Although she is, you know, she is an infantry dragon, so she can like fodder Lugu's friend four to everyone. So she's really worth in that respect. That's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that that's definitely nice. The the other thing though is Divine Vein Stone has gained so much value. Like that's I, that's a really really nice thing to have for Ike. Th- this mm-hmm. is like the all Ike banner. Every one of these <laughs> units were, were like Nurgle inadvertently made Ike better because he made all other Omni tanks worse. Vale is great for the the, the Super Scout. Lumera is great for the Divine Vein Stone, and then Ursula is supposed to counter him, but kind of does and kind of doesn't. Yep. 
all hail Ike. Uh, God yeah, of the meta. it's the, the entire meta. Take. It's just yep. Ike. Like you, <laughs> you want him in everything, uh, even on defense. Like he is the yep. ultimate defense unit right now, which is nutty. Yep, I run him on defense. Uh, I, I just realized, like, if I put him on defense, no one can gale force. Like it just doesn't happen. I, I'm like, cool. I mean, eighty faced- percent of the rank one teams have Ike on defense, and I'm like, okay, this is just nuts. <laughs> I, I, it just shuts down so much. Like it's actually so yeah. difficult to like get around everything. Like you have to like, okay, I gotta deal with the save. Uh, you know, what I mean, I gotta deal. And then now there's Ike over here being annoying, just chilling in the corner, stopping me from yep. coming into Gale Force. Like, okay. You know what this means? Everyone should use AOE Goldfag for Gale Force. All right, AOE Goldfag is a hard counter to Ike. Like. I've faced so many Ikes on defense, none of them can survive AoE Govag. And so this is AoE Govag's time to shine right here, right now. It's, <laughs> it's going to be Govag's world, trust. I, I all, ran into all a team you do this, you just separate them. That's what I did at least. I made yeah. sure Mur was not next to Ike. And I was like, cool. And when they AoE Mur, like, it just doesn't, it doesn't do anything to Ike. Don't or if they try to AoE Ike, it, it's, it uh, doesn't damage Mur, and then Mur doesn't die. I'm like, okay. I, I went up against a team that was 2 plus 10. Ike's on defense. I was like, what is what is, what is this? <laughs> Dude, a team of just like, six Ikes or like or like five Ikes and two defense mythics. Like, okay. Oh man, that would be so toxic. It's yeah. <laughs> I feel like with two Ikes, you can probably just wait for Bolt Tower though to lock that down. Well, Bolt Tower depends a lot on where your position is though. Uh, where they were at, I think you where you put the Bolt Tower, you would have gotten one but not the other. Uh, hey, but the one is enough. I had, <laughs> I, definitely, and I—I I mean, I had an Ike team, and I did eventually beat them. The problem is the Ike slows down the pace of Aether Raids yes. so yes, much. Like I—I'm yeah. I'm taking those teams out to like turn six now every time. Mm-hmm. Like it's—it it goes a long time. Yeah, I've noticed that too. Where he's just like, oh. Ike's charging me. Crap. I gotta like back up and like make sure he doesn't kill something. Yeah. Oh, he hit me. He's not dead though. Crap. Okay. Like it, it, it just adds turns to your team or to your, yeah. to your match. Yeah. You need to get the pots and everything. That's definitely really annoying oh. having to go around that I for sure. So <laughs> Give me a mythic and the mythic, it's an offense mythic. And it says at the beginning of turn breaks both pots. I would plus 10 that immediately. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. They, they won't do it that way. It will be at merge five breaks one pot. At merge ten breaks two pots. That's I'm, the way I I'm fine to with it. it. Let's, let's do it. I'm down. Sign me up. I hate pots. I hate pots so much. I never have to deal with that mechanic ever again. It's not even that mechanic. It's just it's stupid. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just how like scoring stamina works apparently. Yep. Which yeah, it's really interesting. Um, but yeah, like, again, it's funny how this Fallen banner is just like really good for Ike. And then the Bridal banner is really, really good for just Gale Force in general. Um, which is interesting because like normally like Omni tanks versus player phase, like if one suffers, one, the other gets better and mm-hmm. etc. cetera. Um, but I think we're kind of in an interesting situation where like, obviously Gale Force is just really, really strong right now, and Omni tanks. Like, obviously, like you can have other Omni tanks, and they work just fine. It's ether rates. After all, the state of defense is yep. kind of sad <laughs> right now. But like, Ike is definitely like one of the best Omni tanks, and definitely the recommended one for yep, sure. I've been using Ike and Altina on every single map I run into now, pretty much. Yeah, it's not Gale Force because I'm being lazy, but like, I just. I'll just put Icarl Tino. Okay, it, I win. It really depends on how hard you want to work. And that, I right. mean, <laughs> like, I, I did the the almost rank one run with Sharena. And that, I mean, that, that that took a lot of work. <laughs> but yeah. uh, you, can, you can do it. It's just most people don't want to work that hard. Exactly. Right. There was, uh, th- there was a, a person who commented on my last Forma video and they were like, why would I get a Forma of Fjorm if I can just use Ike? I'm like, I, <laughs> I got nothing for this comment. I mean, that's, I, I mean, it, that's not a, wrong. It's a true question. Like, I don't think anyone besides Fjorm fans would like Forma Summer Fjorm, like honestly. Which is crazy. She's not even a year old. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, I, I didn't really like Fjorn when she released, so that's just like my opinion. Well, I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, like, character bias aside, right? Like, typically they release a, a unit on Hall of Forms that isn't a year old, and they're, they have a PRF weapon, right? It's typically a good deal. You're like, oh, I'm getting something out of this. But like, yeah. And you are, I'm not saying that you don't with this Fjorm. I'm just saying, like, usually they wouldn't do that, right? Like, it's very, very unusual. So, like, holy crap. Do that with Felix. Where's, where's the Felix Forma? <laughs> yeah. Where is the Felix Forma? <laughs> I would do that in a heartbeat. They're going to have a Felix Forma, but it's going to be Winter Felix. <laughs> you know, why do you do this? <laughs> I'm sorry. I spoke it into existence. Now it's happening. Uh, if that happens, I'm coming after you. I'm going to the Flash special. Oh, the, no. the brave units will all be based on their quote favorite oh, my alts. God. No, <laughs> Felix will have a Santa. Hat. That would make me quit the game. Legit. I'd be so done. I'm like, okay, it's been a good run, guys. Uh, but I'm done. No more, no more any Santa anything. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, I think it's very unlikely they would actually do that for the brave. So, oh there no you, way. Normally, they they would, no way they would do that. <laughs> Unless, like, IS is specifically watching us right now, which I, mean, I think is really weird. Considering what they've been doing to me lately, I wouldn't be surprised. They're like, like okay. I gotta get revenge on this Oblivion guy. But, like, they've been getting revenge by targeting your, like, wallet and your orb stash. So they That's would smart, want... smart, though. They would want you to summon for Felix, so they would make it just saying. as you want okay. it, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Gen okay. Generally, the Braves, they play it very safe. I, I would I would argue too safe. I was going to say, yeah, too safe. That's, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's not a bad thing because uh, this they you know they're playing with someone's favorite and they they don't want to they don't want to make anybody mad. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. the one year that they especially played it too safe was like COIL four when it was yes. like three houses lord and it was yes. literally one of the most uninspired batches I've ever seen in a while. <laughs> like, where was my mage Edelgard? That would have been so good, but no, it's just another axe armor. Disappointing. Yeah, I was like, I mean, I like those units. Don't get me wrong; those are cool units. But mm -hmm. like, it was just like, really? Like, we're just doing the the time skip uh, outfits when they they promote? Okay, sure. Like, uh, uh, but when it comes to Felix, I kind of want that. Like, I want the uh, right. Oh my god, the word just went, flew out of my head. Uh, the mage feel. I want mage Felix essentially. The his um, mortal savant. Class. Mortal savant. That's it. Yes. I think that'd be so cool. Give me a close counter, like mage Felix, who is just completely broken. Please, thank you. My only hope for this upcoming CYL is that Robin is not Grima. Like, that is my only wish right now. <laughs> I don't care what you say, Oblivion. Like, Grima is not Robin. End of story. <laughs> Bro, I, I'm going to lose, like, 10,000 subscribers that I don't even have if that happens. Because I'm going to make so many jokes. And everyone's going to get so mad at me. Because anytime I talk about Robin ever, people just get so pissed and make so many comments in my comment section. Grima is not Robin. Stop saying that. I'm like, Because okay, it's so, true. Uh, <laughs> well, is it? I mean, it says Robin right there. I can read. I don't know about other people, but what? <laughs> what are they doing for Alphonse? Like, is it going to be laryngitis Alphonse? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it, well, I mean, you know, the voice actor problems. Uh, that's. Oh, I didn't think about that. I oh, you mean like for the Japanese voice actor? Um, I I don't know. I haven't kept up with that, but. I think for Alphonse's VA specifically, I think they sort of resolved the issues. I don't know. Don't take my word for it, please. <laughs> I don't know either, to be honest. But um, <laughs> so, I'm more interested it up the see... other day, and I was like, "Oh man, I I don't actually remember what happened there." But yeah, that's. I, I'm really interested to see what they do with Alphonse. So, like, if he's gonna like look like Gustav, or if he's gonna look like Veronica or Bruno. I can see him looking like Bruno just because Bruno died. So like that'd be kind of cool. But like yeah. I honestly, what I want, I've been saying this since last year, I want a whole new Alphonse, and I want them to put him into the story. Like, this is your chance to upgrade base Alphonse. It's your chance, IS, and everybody can get him for free. So, like, come on, please, please just do it. Oh my god, it'd be so cool. Yeah. I guess we'll just have to hope that it, it will happen, because, again, like, Veronica, the new legendary Veronica is, like, the Veronica in the story now. Right. So, if yeah, Alphonse exactly. could get that same treatment, like... Yes. That just worked really, really well. And then Sharena next it. year. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Sharena and Alencia for CYL. Worked really good. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> the trade deal has been completed. <laughs> <laughs>
Now we just have to make a bunch of propaganda, and we're good. Yeah. <laughs> um. We haven't talked about the refines yet, have we? Uh, no. yeah, we did not. I mean, is there much to talk about? <laughs> I mean, Summer <sighs> Mia is kind of cool. I will say that. Summer I will Mia's say it, cool. yes. She's yeah. really cool. Uh, the cooldown reduction like thing is, is it? it's a cool niche. Uh, I don't know what they were doing with Leon. They, they, I guess they saw how toxic everybody hates it's like duo Leon, and they were just like, bring back the triangle, uh, you know, <laughs> weapon triangle in 2024. And I'm like, why? Sure, okay, whatever. It's not a terrible refine, but it's definitely not like it was not what I was hoping for. It's, it has like the basic stuff I needed, but not like anything past that. Essentially, it's it's a decent refine. I I, th a, I yes. think it gets yeah. I, I think it gets more crap than it should, just because it that was so it's stupid triangle to have death. the yeah, <laughs> yeah triangle death. I, I just what was it, it's not triangle. It's cancel affinity. That's right, right? It's both. The so cancel affinity he, was ridiculous. I have no idea why they had cancel affinity on there. Well, they they make him give out triangle death, and then he puts cancel affinity only on himself. If, right. he, if he put it on everybody, that would actually be kind of cool. Like I think that would be like some unique tech, mm -hmm. but like it's only on him. So it's like the rest of the teammates yeah. get screwed. It's like okay. I, yep. I don't understand. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it yeah. goes back. I, I think Oblivion. I think you were the one who introduced this idea to me. But the um, basically having so many points that you could put into a refine, right. and so you don't yeah. want them to waste that on useless things. Exactly. And they the absolutely economy, did here. Like, yep. They do that so much. So that's the problem. Like I, I, I try to explain it to people because uh, I, I see people like, well, they can just have everything. And I'm like, that's not really how it works though. Like typically they have a budget for the amount of skills they're giving out for each unit. Sometimes those units get more than others for sure. That definitely happens. Mm -hmm. But um, typically there's a range they're looking for, right? So you really want the key effects you need. Yeah, definitely. And like, as much as Triangle Adapt is really cool, it's just like, not exactly the greatest these days. <laughs> um, definitely no. would have preferred like, I don't know, some more damage reduction or something like that, I guess. Yeah. I was hoping for flat damage reduction or even anti-guard, because anti-guard lets him use the flare beard mm. build perfectly. Um, it lets him get hit, and then he retaliates with flare with Lagoo's friend every single time. So that would have been really, really nice, but we, did, we didn't get that. Or NCD. NCD would have been... I know it's in his base kit, but it would have been so nice. Yeah, I, I wanted even bigger daunts. Like, I wanted ridiculous <laughs> Minus 50 daunt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything does zero damage. Let's go. I mean, I would love that. Fallen Leon has my favorite art of the entire game, so I would, I would not complain. I, Daunts get so overlooked as a, a, mm -hmm. as good things. Like they, they just yep. people don't understand how great they actually are. They're, they're ridiculous. Like the, they, the way they just. I don't think people understand how damage calculated is the problem. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like you see that Ashnard Soren Ball team. Like Ashnard provide exactly. all those Daunts. It's just like one of the most powerful teams. Like that previous SDS and. Yeah, it's really hard when like you have minus 30 attack on you when you're trying to attack or minus 30 defense when you're getting hit. So, yeah. Um Sigurd and Bile looks like there's a there's another oh, Tellius support who also has big daunts that we all underestimate. I'm just going to put it out there. I will continue the George hype train. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I don't think I'll ever like I'll always press exit down when it comes to George, honestly. <laughs> um, yeah. Sigurd and Byleth, I thought, got interest. Well, okay. Thanks a lot. It was not interesting. It was, um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, refined, I guess. I mean, I guess the range extension on Byleth is yes. pretty cool. And very, that's like the biggest good, thing. To be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's just like, there is a lot of ways to get no follow-up these days, so like that support is not yeah. as important, unfortunately. Um, in, I think I, I think he got better in arena, and that's I, I think a lot of people do use him there, so that's at least good. Uh, the the way they that's give true. out that that no follow-up is good in arena. So, but I mean, no one is. We're very few people are summoning strictly for arena right now yeah. so yep it's <clears throat> yeah I, I do think like his refine's probably the best in the match though overall him and yeah. Mia probably uh Sigurd mm, though yeah. like man they were punishing him for his sins like, oh <laughs> yeah yep they're like how dare you break the game who would do this and I'm like you designed him it's your fault like jeez don't blame Sigurd <laughs> uh but he all he needed was like damage reduction piercing and like yep. you know um 
there's one other effect I can't remember. But like, he didn't need that much. And like, they were just like, nope, he he gets nothing. Because yeah, like, he didn't his... get Canto Distance for me. That's it. That's the only thing he got. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because like, his effect is still like really, really powerful. It's just that these days he can't like get through a lot of the tanks. And so, yeah. He can't actually use his effect. And if they just fixed that combat issue, he would have gone back. I don't think he would have been broken by any means. Uh-huh. No. Um, but yeah, I guess, yeah, Sigurd had to be punished for ushering my favorite Aetherate's meta of all time. So I guess that's just how it goes. I will always be a not line defender. Okay. <laughs> not me. Man, that was a, that was a time. It was like, hey, you want to use saves? I'm like, no, I, don't, I guess so. I don't want to. <laughs> Please don't make me do right. it. That's why we kill force, my Omni baby. Takes, then you make me use saves. <laughs> Gale force. <laughs> <laughs> that was the death of my brave Ike, and I, I'm yep. still bitter about it. <laughs> me too. Brave Ike and Fallen Ike for me. I was so bitter. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I think uh, I was ditching Brave Ike once, like um, Dual Lift started becoming really popular during that time. Well, it was like it was all, right. all the same time. So it was, was all the same time. Yeah, all, it was all the rolled same time. in together. Yeah. <laughs> it literally killed the meta in like like a month, pretty much. It oh, was yeah. kind of crazy. Scorched Earth. Just let's start <laughs> for over. Real. You like healing? No healing. Yeah, you like being able to hide your units? No hiding your units. Like, okay, cool. Thanks. I mean, it's it's kind of what we're going through now. Yeah, yeah definitely. Except the opposite way, because it's like nothing can kill th- anything on offense these days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to say, like, I don't want anyone on Twitter or Reddit to complain about Etherate's difficulty ever again, because, like, this right now is just, like, insanely um straightforward <laughs> like oh my oh, goodness yeah, yeah. Well, they'll, 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 they'll complain they'll just be like, i don't have ike what am i supposed to do and then, use you know other I say? units summon ike you summon ike that's what you do summon ike <laughs> i mean you don't need ike <sighs> to do well in ether rays these days or even to have that's ether rays be easy like nope, nope. that's <laughs> okay. awakening propaganda everyone knows Elias is king right now you must summon for ike or you all right do not retrain one it's it's just the rules yeah. of the game i don't make it you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm just waiting for for dtm to somehow get lucina back into the podcast i mean <laughs> you know all you need is valentine's lucina and then you can do fine <laughs> And when it comes to ether rays, all I'm just going to say is like I'm always a Gale Force like propagandist, mm-hmm. but I don't think you need yeah. Gale Force in this ether rates climate either. Like honestly, I feel like a lot of strategies just in general work with a wide variety of units that I feel like people yeah. miss out on. And so yeah, like again, ether rates right now is like probably the easiest it's been in a while, and. I th- I've always been saying it's been easy for like two years, so yeah, love the state right now. Yeah, I mean, I typically I was just Gale Forcing, that's what I did because it was just like mm-hmm. the most consistent strategy. But then they were like, hey, here's an Ike and Altino, so I was like, okay, well, wow, I'm well, my favorites. Oblivion, you have you make your an wish. Interesting, you make an interesting point there. I, I'm sitting here thinking of all the different strategies. You know what Embla is really, really good for is hit and run. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Like He's that? Like, hey, you want your AOE charged? Here you go. Like, okay, thanks. Yeah, she she might actually be better for hit and run teams than for Gale Force teams because I mean, let's face it, Gale Force teams aren't really struggling to kill anything <laughs> right now. Mm-hmm. Right, that is true. Actually, I, I, yeah. I feel like all like what offense strategy is bad right now. Like, I, I really can't think of like I'm trying to think of one that's like bad because hit and runs good. Vantage Gale Force is good. Tanking is Vantage is oh. so good. What are you talking? Vantage is the best strategy ever. Okay, never mind. <laughs> you just, you just gotta, you just gotta know what you're doing. I guess relatively, it's Vantage, but yeah, like there, I think I agree. There's like no bad Etherate's offense strategy these days because yeah. Etherate's offense is just super, super overpowered, and mm-hmm. yeah, defenses are struggling right now. Save us, Is, please. I need my content you know again. <laughs> it's fine because because my defense has been rank one three weeks in a row, and I'm I'm happy. So I'm you've been killing that. it. Yeah, and I blame. I don't, Ike. I don't know what happened. Like uh, I, I, I'm I telling just, you, I blame Ike. <laughs> <laughs> I I, like, I just decided like I'm a I'm gonna do a good defense for once. Let's see if I can hit rank one this time, and it just worked. And I was like, okay, let me try this in every season. And I was like, cool, it's working. I might need a copy of your yeah. defense then, because. Mine is still it's very expensive. RNG. 
It's very expensive. <laughs> it's about to get more expensive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Unak has died. Let's just say that. Like, we needed some. Oh no. Uh, that's like well, caps in the codes. Let's go. That, True. That's True. that's something you said, Oblivion. That is one hundred percent correct. And the actual way you beat Ike is Fatal Smoke Four. Mm-hmm. Like that's on if everybody. you have that on your team, then he suddenly becomes less of a problem. You put it on mm-hmm. every single person gets Fatal Smoke Four, and he can't heal. <laughs> and you're fine. <laughs> it's expensive, yeah. but it works. Yeah, gotta use those rearms, I guess, to crank out those Fatal Smokes. Um, it's about three so hard to get. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I guess, like, the thing, the last thing I want to talk about um, is this upcoming legendary and this upcoming mm-hmm. legendary banner, which is, like, I think we can all agree, it's one, it's a really insane banner, honestly. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, because you have, like, Ike and Marth sharing. Cavacer being there is kind of... Uh, whatever but like i guess you can get inside fodder um you can't win them all i guess um (laughs) it's not the worst thing i mean it's not it's It's not the worst unless you get her then it's gonna then i'm gonna be crying so we'll see (laughs) we'll see yeah um green obviously uh we have legendary female alir presumably the new legendary and um presumably rearm lucina which is really exciting for me because both oh, fodder okay. and you know being a you know being a lucina oh, i have to plus in eventually sharing with alir which is going to be my accidental plus 10 project i guess um which is really exciting uh, what was on blue again i i, I completely forgot i think actually. it was garbage let me see <laughs> i don't um, think it was that good oh yeah a blue has a fey shez and lumera hmm. yep avoid that avoid that hard <laughs> And then colorless. I mean, it's not the worst, actually. Only Faze really, really bad there. Like, yeah. Lumera is decent, and Jez is good if you hyper invest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With Fail then... Smoke 4. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants Fail Smoke 4. <laughs> and then colorless, we have Asker, which is unironically still like the top like mythics in the game. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Very good. I definitely did find him like a little bit less useful against Loki, but like it's not that big of a deal. It's just, it's just yeah. a little bit of a hit towards I, him. Yeah. I have Lagoose Friend 4 waiting to go on him, and I, I just, for some reason, I haven't been able to pull the trigger yet. It's actually an interesting build. It, it's good. I mean, both Askers use it very, very, very well. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I like Asker for the cooldown, not necessarily for, like, the resonance. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, like... Again, Asker's still really strong. We had Golveg, which comes with Occultist Strike, which everyone appreciates. Yep. And then presumably Hortensia, which is an insane uh, rearmed and also just an insane support unit to begin with. And so, yeah, yeah, this is a really, really good banner. Do you have any speculations? I'm, oh, go ahead. I, I'm going to have no orbs for this banner. So, I mean, it, it's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> No. I, I hope to get to the spark. It, it depends on how lucky I get, but I'm most likely I'll be I'll, I'll be cardboard boxing it. You're gonna join <laughs> Oblivion in Pity Rick City. Yeah, I, I we'll have a little seven. Metropolis going soon enough. He, he actually he moved into the double decker uh-huh. uh, cardboard box and he offered to give me the 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 single room, and so that that's what I'll be moving into with my my wife and child. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh gosh, <laughs> it's gonna be uh, yeah, it's gonna be rough. Cause like I mean, for me too, like mm-hmm. I, I'm gonna probably plus ten. Like I'm a little bit more iffy on it than I was before, just because my luck has been so absolutely terrible with gadgets. So I'm like, oh, right. I don't know if I want to spend that much money, but we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, all my luck has just been channeling towards like. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. No, no one in this call believes you, by the way. We all think oh, you're thanks. gonna plus ten. Yeah. Ike. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Who are we expecting the legendary to be? Because I think it's like green fire. I think, oh, like who yeah. fits in that? I that's the thing. Like technically, I don't think really anyone fits into it. But like I think they'll just like shove somebody in. So it'll probably be like Soren or Soth or maybe Male Corin. I don't know. Like one of those three. Male Corin as fire. Yeah, that would it's be interesting. Like, that's the thing, like, because, like, Soren as not wind makes no sense. He's literally a wind mage. Like, it's a very big deal in the story. He's a wind mage. 
mm-hmm. and Monarch. Okay, <laughs> right. And then Soth. I guess Soth could be kind of whatever, but I felt like Soth would always be like Earth or something. But it's it's kind of like yeah. I guess I it's like same. whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I think this one's gonna be an oddball. So I I I'm I'm not sure it's gonna. I think it's gonna be off the beaten path. So that that is that is my prediction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It might be like just some random OC. They'd be like fair. Hey, this OC got introduced in this chapter. Now they're the new legendary. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly can't think of anything for the Spanish. So it's going to be really interesting to see what like IS comes up with for this. Right. In like seven days ish. Oh wow! Yeah, we're, we're getting close. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been like uh, around an hour and ten minutes since we uh, started recording. Um, Always, always amazing uh, conversations as always. Is there anything you two wanted to discuss before we end it off? Uh, I, I, we got to plug Joel's stream. Joel's going to be yes. plus tending Shreina. Oh. You have to go check that out. Uh, you have to be there for that. It's going to be crazy. So make sure to show up and show some support. Come, come wish me luck and, and support me when I don't have it. So, <laughs> <laughs> what, what time is it, Joel? Do we have a time yet? Or... Uh, it, it, I, it, I think it's at eight, at eight central on Saturday. I'm gonna try to push it to seven so that we don't have to go too late. But um, we'll, we'll see. I, I have to ask the wife's permission on that one. Sure. All right. So you heard it here, folks. Uh, Saturday will be Joel's plus ten Sharina stream. It's gonna be super exciting. We have so much orbs saved, I I'm believe, so in the nervous. orb base. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be, it'll, it'll go well. It'll go well. I'll, I'll try to join you in order to like get the luck to roll you know <laughs> I appreciate it yeah um, but yeah thank you too as always for joining me on this podcast always always super fun um, and yeah thank you everyone for watching or for listening um, let us know down in the comments what your uh, thoughts are on this past month of Fae and these past three banners uh, which was your favorite etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, but yeah thank you all so much for watching hope you all enjoyed and hope to see you all next time. Bye, everyone. Have a good one. Bye.